Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. I'm back with some more musical guitar goodness for you. This Andy James shred guitar picking trick. <laughs> This quick guitar tricks, we're looking at that awesome Andy James technique that I only recently found out about from the hang session Herman Lee did with Andy James a while back. I'll link to it with the eye up there if that sounds up your street. Now, full disclosure here, my chops are nowhere near the speed, fluency and accuracy of Andy's, but this little tip has really helped out. The tabs are up on my patreon.com forward slash JBF music if you want them. And if you enjoy this video or indeed the content I put out in general, please give like a click and leave a comment on what you'd like to see more of, but let's hop to it, eh? Okay, instead of the standard YouTube 20 minute ramble going off on a non-music related tangent and barely addressing the topic at hand somewhere maybe in the last five minutes if at all, we're getting right into it. Basically, you pick the first two notes, then hammer on the next. If you like this no-nonsense approach complete with chapters then feel free to give subscribe a click and enable all notifications to make sure you never miss out on new content. There are other ways you can get a similar amount of speed by including legato like that Paul Gilbert triplet trick tutorial with the eye up there. The advantage of this Andy James approach is that you can maintain one direction of pick slanting throughout. The way he does this as an upward pick slanter I also prefer is to hit the first note with an up, a down, and hammer. Next string gets an up, down, so on. Hopefully you can see my pick gets kept at this angle throughout. I'll, I'll roll my fingers in so it's a bit easier to see. Now if all this talk of pick slanting sounds totally alien, I have covered that before so for a quick 101 give the eye up there a click. If you prefer to downward pick slant, so holding your pick angled like this, then I suggest starting on a down, up, hammer, and the same thing, down, up, hammer. So doing it that way, I'm exaggerating it to make a point but you can see you can keep that upward escape stroke slanted angle. Now the pick slanting thing isn't that crucial and in all honesty it's good to be able to do it other ways. It just means that one way will likely be a bit more intuitive to you or easier to add in on the fly when you're improvising solos. So one more time starting with an upstroke you'd angle this way, go up, down, hammer, same thing across all the strings. You can see I'm maintaining the same angle with my pick. If we started on a downstroke, we'd want to angle the pick this way, down up hammer. You don't want to be rotating the pick between them is what I'm getting at. You want to stay all the same way, either that way or that way, so you can really get the speed on this. But okay, I'll bring up the tab for what I was doing there. It's a pretty cool run in C-sharp minor. As always, start off slow, get a feel for it, lock in the muscle memory. The way I'm thinking of this is basically up on each string, so I'm thinking up, up. For whatever reason, simplifying it to that really helped me stop trying to pick every single note. Okay, this is the same idea but applied to a longer run, this time in B minor. Again, just pick the first two notes and hammer on. 
I get the feeling this technique has probably popped up in my playing when I'm improvising, but unconsciously, because while the hand movement feels familiar, I've never knowingly done it. The second bar here is actually exactly the same as bar one, but just an octave higher. The same principle like in that video up there on Guthrie Govan's string skip system. <laughs> switching up here using pull-offs in the place of hammer-ons to come down the scale is just lick one and reverse that C sharp minor run. If you tense up when you're doing legato then check out the top tips with the eye up there. But yep, yeah, you're doing pick, pick, pull off and just do that across the strings. Again, try starting on a downstroke or an upstroke and just see which feels better. Once more, if you're using an upstroke you still want to have this upward pick slanting holding the pick this way. If you're starting on a down, you want to downward pick slant. I've just taken that same pull-off idea and used it over a bigger run for this lick. It's a kind of variation on that other one that we did in B minor but we went up the scale. As a side note, this technique works really well using triplets and three note per string scale shapes as you probably have already figured out. Okay, the final application here, kudos if you've made it this far and a shout out to Lick Squad Elite, you guys rock. In all honesty, I don't think this is really the best use for this trick, it excels because the hard part is really kind of crossing strings, and using legato gives you those precious precious milliseconds to get to the adjacent string with a minimal stop. But this is a way to use it nonetheless, and also the more I play this lick the more it starts to kind of feel right or feel kind of good. We're in A minor here and we're just going up and down on one string, but again you're going to pick, pick, hammer. Pick, pick, hammer. For that first six groups of triplets, so up to here. And what we're going to do is pick, pick, pull off on the remaining ones on the E string. And this last one here on the B string, you want to pick, pick, pull off, and slide up to that A to resolve the lick. Give that a click if you want even more picking tips. This has been Quick Guitar Tricks, so that's the playlist there. But yeah, hit subscribe to keep up to date with the channel, leave me a comment, check out the tabs on my Patreon, and enable all notifications by ringing that little bell on the side, if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys.